My name is Clinton Jones, and I love creating photoreal 3D environments. I draw inspiration from the places I've been around the world and the experiences I've had that shape me as an artist. Recreating personal memories allows me to not only revisit those memories and feelings, but more importantly, they offer a unique and personal angle to create my art from. It's almost a shortcut to developing your style and artistic voice. So in this video, I'd love to show you how I'm utilizing 3D software to bring my latest trip to life in the hopes of inspiring you to create your own unique experiences. And since creating quickly is so important in today's day and age, I wanna show you how I'm creating these speed environments in one day's time. Shoutouts to Asus for sponsoring this video. Stick around to learn all about the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro OLED laptop and how it can keep you creative on the go. Now, if we're gonna create this scene quickly, it's crucial we gather the right reference. A few months back, I attended the third annual Camp MoGraph, a yearly multi-day meetup where 3D artists, educators, and industry professionals step away from their computers and into nature to learn, laugh, and relax together as friends and family. Since camp was held on the beach this year, we gathered together on the warm sand to experience a glorious sunset together every evening. The images and videos from this trip will act as my creative cheat sheet and give me everything I need to pack our scene full of sentimental detail. I'll begin creating in a powerful free program called Unreal Engine 5. You can download the software in the description along with a number of other useful tools and resources. But I'll start with the game project file in a blank scene with RTX enabled. To navigate, we can hold right click and use the WAS and D keys. Q and E to crane up and down, and the slider on the top right will control camera sensitivity. With an object selected, spacebar cycles between position, rotation, and scale gizmos. Control backtick will switch between local and world orientation. F will snap your viewport to any selected object, and the G key will show or hide viewport icons. But where do we start? I want to lay out the main building blocks of our scene first, mainly the ocean, the dock, and our sky, as well as our camera angle. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I'm all about getting to the overall vibe as fast as humanly possible, so we can spend time on the details later. So let's sketch out our scene by adding an ocean, by first ensuring the water plugin is enabled, and let's create a landscape object first for our ocean to live on. Let's switch to the landscape panel and create a landscape and search for ocean in the place actors window, which is where you can create lights, cameras, volumes, and various other objects like water and drag it out into our scene. But for now, let's lock in the next biggest element, the lighting. Now you can use the default lighting setup in Unreal, but I'm using a plugin called Ultra Dynamic Sky. It's incredibly versatile and extremely easy to use. So let's adjust the volumetric cloud amount, time of day slider, and fog amount to get our lighting to the 90% mark. To add light shafts, I'll search for them in the details panel. Crank the light shaft slider to make sure the effect is working, then dial it back for a subtle look. We can adjust our sun radius for a more dramatic effect and tweak the sky saturation and overall intensity if needed. Now let's add our main subject next, the old wooden dock. Since speed is my main goal, I'm utilizing this asset pack on the Epic Games Marketplace and kit bashed a dock based on my reference images from camp. To make final tweaking easier, I'll select every dock asset and hit Ctrl G to group them. And now that we have a subject, we can finally set up our camera by searching for Cine Camera in the Place Actors window, dragging it out, right clicking and selecting Pilot Camera. Choose your favorite aspect ratio, lock the camera's focus to the dock, and line up your shot. Remember, it's a waste of time to work on things the camera can't see, so it's crucial to set up our camera angle early on in order to further focus our creative efforts. And since I want to export an animated scene and ensure my camera stays locked in this position, I need to create a timeline or a sequence as it's called in Unreal Engine. Let's drag our camera inside and add keyframes to the position and rotation to ensure it's locked in place. And in case we move it, it'll automatically snap back don't forget to set your frame rate to 24 for that nice filmic look and set your preferred timeline duration. And to finally lock in our look, I'll create a post-process volume from the Place Actors window, which you can use to control the overall look of your scene. Just be sure to look for Unbound and check Infinite Extent. Now I like to make subtle color shifts, gamma tweaks, add vignette and film grain, as well as control render settings, like changing our reflection from lumen to ray traced, which is crucial for a scene like this. Now I'd consider this about 80% complete. 
I'm generally happy with our lighting, camera, and composition, and we got here in no time at all. So let's move on to the next most important element, the crowd atop our deck. Using Mixamo, a free animated character library by Adobe, I'm able to grab a handful of different characters performing different actions. By dragging the characters into the sequencer and selecting their animation, you can drag out their handles for an infinitely looping character. And since we're dealing with silhouetted people from a distance, you'll never notice the duplicate stock characters that fill up this dock. Now for my favorite part, adding the custom details that will make this scene special and specific to the time we all spent together in Silver Beach, Virginia. It's the story element that makes your art significant. So I'll break each added element down in order of importance to the piece, starting with this tower that was so unique to this location. So let's kitbash one from assets I found on cgtrader.com and get it out there. I don't even need to texture it since it's only seen in silhouette. And to connect this tower to the rest of our scene, I'll add another one way off into the distance and a smaller antenna attached to our dock. It's what takes it from a recreation to an artistic interpretation. I did the same thing with both of these pieces of art referenced from my trips in Newfoundland, Canada. But now the image looks empty on the right side, so I made this old fishing net in Cinema 4D by locking off the vertices of a sweeped spline and enabling rope dynamics. From there, I made this low poly seaweed piece and cloned it across an identical spline a few feet higher with a cloner object and random effector. I gave the seaweed a cloth tag and hit play. The dynamic rope catches some of the seaweed on its way down, giving us the perfect look. Just add some bamboo supports from the Megascans library, which come free with Unreal 5, and we're starting to balance things out. Back in Cinema 4D, I'll quickly model a buoy, duplicate it across our midground, and subtly animate them up and down in sequencer to fake that bobbing on the surface of the water look. Since I know I'll create a nighttime version of this scene, which I'll walk you through soon, I'll create some string lights to draw the eye to our dock. In C4D, I'll use the same dynamic spline technique on a sweep spline to set up our lights, model a basic bulb, and use a cloner set to object mode to duplicate it across our scene. I'll export an FBX and bring it back into Unreal, making sure to uncheck combined meshes. That way I can light up the bulbs only. And for the final touch, during our last sunset together at Camp MoGraph, we experienced this special moment. The timing was perfect and I had to add it in. So I modeled a low poly kayak in cinema, animated the paddles with Grayscale Gorilla's signal plugin, which gives you full loopable control over any attribute. And from there, I created a basic character in Daz 3D, a free character generator software, brought him into C4D, auto rigged him using Daz's importer and animated his hands to match the paddles. I baked the single loop down to an Alembic file, brought it into Unreal as a geometry cache, and animated the loop across the horizon with Sequencer. Now I love taking my hobbies on the go, and when it comes to 3D art and video production, the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro OLED laptop has me covered, and it's packed with hardware to make creating scenes like this possible from anywhere in the world. First off, it's equipped with a gorgeous, color accurate 16 inch 4K OLED display, which guarantees true black values and the perfect accuracy we need when dialing in our look. It comes loaded with an Intel i9 processor, an Nvidia RTX A3000 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and a flexible memory configuration with up to 64 gigs of physical RAM. It also ships with a four terabyte SSD drive for quick file transfer and storage for all your applications. Now a really cool feature I dig on this ProArt laptop is the Asus dial, which lets you control things like brightness and volume on the fly, but also allows for mapping of custom inputs like brush size, saturation, or layer opacity. The ProArt Creator Hub lets you customize performance, color, screen calibration, and the Asus dial settings. The laptop's been a fantastic addition to my 3D workflow for on-the-go creativity, and it's a wonderful professional-grade laptop for any creator. So if you guys are interested in checking out Asus's ProArt laptop for your on-the-go creativity, 3D modeling, video production, click that link in the description. It really helps me out. Thanks for your time, everybody. Let's hop back in to the art. So why stop with just the sunset scene? Let's have fun and experiment to see how far we can really push our scene. For the night version, it's almost as easy as moving the time of day slider until we see the moon, and we can dial in its position with the moon offset settings. Crank the moon radius just a bit, mess with the moon phase to get that copywritten look, and tweak the texture brightness to make it a little bit brighter. 
Now, it's super important to give yourself time to explore the various settings as you never know what you'll find and where your art can go. Let's light up our dock since we added those string lights earlier. I'll apply this basic emissive material instance to our light bulbs, but this isn't enough. The emissive lights don't actually light up our dock. So I'll create a rectangle light from our place actors window, adjust its size and place it just above our string lights. But I wanna see the shape of the light in the fog. And the only way to get that look is by ensuring our fog inside of ultra dynamic sky is set to volumetric. Only then can we crank the volumetric intensity in our rec light settings to see our volumetric light shafts. Let's create a basic sphere from the place actors window, add a red emissive light and place them atop each antenna for a touch of sweet, sweet detail. And that completes our night version. But what about a super foggy version? So years back, I explored the Mount Wilson Observatory with my good friend Young. And when we got to the top, we were greeted with an amazing sight. Massive towers peering out from the thick layer of fog. Now let's see if we can get that same look. With ultra dynamic sky selected, let's change the time of day, add some clouds and take the fog slider up and definitely adjust your exposure if need be. Let's search for fog in the UDS details panel. And if we increase the base fog density and foggy density contribution, we're getting close. But now our tower's gone. But check this out. If we tweak the foggy height fog fall off slider, we'll start to get that effect we're going for. Finally, I'll hide everyone except a lone character. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I almost couldn't figure out how to fix this ugly, extra bright reflection on the water. So if you're getting the same issue, it likely has to do with the absorption settings on the water material. So I just set the absorption to black and it fixed things right up so much better. And with that, we have completed all three versions of our scene, but to export them and call it a day right now would be a disservice to your time and your art. It'd be like making a song you're proud of, but not taking the time to mix it properly. So we need to do a bit of color grading and add some post-process effects to truly bring our art through the finish line. And I'll be doing this with a free non-linear editor called DaVinci Resolve. I'll start with the color grade by working in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlight values first. Then in another layer or node in DaVinci, since it's node-based, I'll apply any color or saturation tweaks. Next, I'll create a node to add vignette, another for bloom, which really helps me pop out the deck in our night scene. And don't forget to blur your CG renders just a touch because perfectly sharp footage doesn't really exist. And finally, I'll add film grain last on top of everything else. You can use DaVinci's built-in grain, but I like to use grain from a pack called Gorilla Grain set to overlay for best results. After adding a bit of music with Paul Stretch and Ableton Live, our very personal, unique environment is complete. If you wanna follow this tutorial step-by-step, step, that's totally fine. It's what we all have to do to learn these programs. But I'll encourage you to also use your personal trips and experiences as jumping off points to push yourself really helped me find my style and I hope it helps you too. This is the first video in a small series of speed environment breakdowns, so feel free to subscribe so you don't miss those, as well as my next big community challenge in February of 2023. My name is Clinton Jones. Keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.